Thanks, Josh. You did out me as a Ron Paulaholic. That's how I got engaged in this, uh, this fight. And that's really when I woke up about five years ago. Um, I saw a film called Aerosol Crimes. And that was one of the first documentaries that uh, really sparked my interest as to alternative media. Uh, then I came across the movie Zeitgeist. And from that point, uh, when I learned about 9-11, my world was shattered. There was no turning back from that point. I started researching every person that was in that film. I started learning about the money and banking system, and I was looking for some honesty. But before I get into all of that, I do want to reflect on somebody that we lost this year that's been very special to me. Uh, it's been very special uh, to uh, people all over the world. And that is our fallen soldier, John Boncor. He goes by the name Splitting the Sky or Dakajawea. John is a, a leader among leaders. He was, uh, he was the only person charged in New York City during the Attica Rebellion. Uh, he was uh, defended by um, Ramsey Clark. And he has been part of the Gustafson Lake standoff. And he's been a huge outspoken advocate for finding the people that perpetrated the wars and aggression and profiteering behind 9-11. And I'd ask that people please, please look into who Splitting the Sky is. He is a profound person. His legacy will live forever. And he is a, he is a local BC-born uh, native. So in today's solutions, we've heard many things from many wonderful speakers, champions for freedom, champions of liberty, people who are espousing the individual, not the collective. Because when you are strong as an individual, you become a strongest link in your community. You build your community by being the best that you can be yourself. I have some solutions that I've come across over the course of the last year that I'd like people to maybe take home and digest and Google and reference themselves. Uh, some amazing technological advancements that we're fortunate, to, fortunate enough to, to, to see coming to fruition. Some of the biggest challenges we face, including voting. We've heard about direct democracy, but what about the vote fraud that goes on through these electronic voting systems? or even the counting of paper ballots. Well, there is a TED Talk by David Bismarck who has created a fraud-proof voting machine. I encourage people to definitely check out David Bismarck on TEDx. There's also ways that we can create heirloom seed banks at our local libraries. If you can Google that, you can find out ways that we can capture our own personal health freedom and support others in our community by creating local uh, sustainable food systems where we don't have to rely on big agribiz or big commercial groceries, grocery stores. We can rely on our own heirloom seed banks and we can introduce it at public libraries. We also have the degradation of our ocean water globally, and some people may have heard of the Pacific garbage patch, which is all of the plastics and garbage that have been dumped into our oceans have dissolved. It's, if you could imagine a, a massive garbage patch, you would think of large pieces of debris floating around the ocean. Well, this garbage patch, they say, is as big as Texas, but it's actually 10 to 15 times larger than that. And it's not big pieces of debris, it's actually particulate that has been dissolved into the water and it needs to be filtered. There is a young 19-year-old boy named Boyens Slat who has started the Ocean Cleanup Foundation that has found a way to use electrochemically mediated seawater through a desalinization process and you can learn more through the University of Texas. That is a solution that we can use to clean up our oceans, which is so vital to our Earth systems. We also talk about the energy crisis. So much reliance upon petrochemicals, the tar sands, uh, coal. Well, we have access to hemp. Yes. 
They promoted hemp 100 years ago and through the 50s. Hemp is one of the most resource-rich agricultural products known to man. They would pro they've been promoting this for decades, especially throughout World War II. The government even put out commercials encouraging people to grow hemp. It's renewable. It's sustainable. It grows 15, 20 feet tall. You can cut it down twice a year. You don't have to cut down trees. You can use it for textiles. You can use it for carpet. You can use it for food, medicine. And you can use it for, petro for petroleum. You can power an automob automobile. You can do almost anything with, with hemp. It is such an important key piece of the fabric of our solution and our prosperity as a human race. And that's why it's so important that we have people from Sensible BC here today talking about the decriminalization referendum that's going on right now. We need people signing that and getting involved as canvassers across the province. They're doing really well, but we need that extra boost. We're halfway through the campaign, so please go to sensiblebc.ca and find out more on how you can get engaged. We also talk about the, the other pieces of the energy crisis. And did you know that we're coming up with new ways, with new supercapacitors, and with elements that are available around the world called graphene, where you could charge your cell phone in five seconds. Not five hours, but five seconds. Through this new t emerging technology, we can use that to power our homes, we can use that to power almost everything in a much more efficient way. Instead of utilizing this electrical grid, which BC Hydro is milking everybody and milking our pocketbooks. We've had enough of BC Hydro. We're gonna to turn to individual solutions and be responsible for ourselves. So go out there, take a look, and Google graphene. The last thing I wanted to leave with everybody today is some solutions on how you can get engaged as a, as a local activist in the new media revolution. One of the things that I've done personally over the years is fake it till I make it. So I created my own press pass. I have my photo on here. I got the We Are Trains logo. This, I put a little lanyard around my neck and I got it laminated at Staples. Cost me five bucks. But this has got me in to the press room to confront Michael Ignatieff about those wars that have been going on overseas. I've confronted Jack Layton. I've confronted Thomas Mulcair on the war in Libya. I've confronted Justin Trudeau on the use of depleted uranium in Syria and in Libya. This little press pass for five bucks got me in behind the scenes and we've used that on Freedom Free For All television. I absolutely encourage everybody to make their own. Another wicked thing that we have a ton of fun doing is pretty much every Friday night, we go out and we will chalk the town. You can go to Toys R Us, you can go to anywhere, a dollar store, and buy a pack of chalk, and go down in front of the bars and nightclubs, and, when the, and there's all these people out and about. You can use chalk on the sidewalk. It's, um, you can get biodegradable chalk, costs pennies on the dollar, and you can see messages and share messages in a unique way that most people aren't used to seeing. Instead of seeing a billboard uh, up on the highway or, or uh, watching a TV ad, if you put chalk on the sidewalk, people are going to stop and go, whoa. And what we, what we find is that people are actually going, hey, that's you guys that are chalking? And we go, yeah, you want some? They're like, yeah, sure. Totally, well, here's some chalk. Spread the word, spread the love, find some unique ways that you can get engaged, and that is definitely a big one. It is all incumbent upon each of us as individuals. We are all leaders. And I find that when you know your individual values and become a values-based leader, that is how you spread the most influence in your community and the most influence in your family, and that's how you find the greatest amount of success in your own personal life. Thank you very much. We we'll look forward to the fourth annual Freedom and Solutions Rally. Thank you very much, Josh. And uh, to all, a blessed day.